So this is my sixth COP. Uh, and I guess in terms of uh, civic space inside of COP, uh, they've always been quite restrictive uh, in terms of our ability to, to protest and to voice our demands inside of COP. It's always been quite restrictive. Uh, we're definitely seeing a tendency towards this getting worse. Um, so there's a lot of restrictions on what, how and, and what we're able to, to bring up in this space, especially regarding actions where uh, we're restricted to certain very um, small uh, restricted uh, spaces where we have to get a permission to hold a protest, uh, where we have to explain what our banners are going to say, how loud we're going to be, how many people will be there, where we're not allowed to name countries, to name corporations. So it's, it's very sanitized as a space, especially in terms of um, giving, giving space and allowing the climate justice movement to speak up. Uh, so it's kind of always been the case, but we're very much seeing more and more restriction trying to be uh, imposed on, on the movement. This year we're specifically getting a lot of restrictions uh, regarding our ability to protest, especially our ability to speak up in solidarity uh, with Palestine and with, and, and with what's happening in Palestine. So we're seeing a lot of... Um, a lot of that tendency to try and, and restrict uh, what we're saying, how we're saying it, where we're saying it. So we have freedom of movement in the sense of like we can walk around the conference centre but we can't protest anywhere in the conference centre. We're very restricted to specific spaces that we have to apply to hold a 30 minute protest hour. So it's not, it's not really a freedom of movement. There's also a lot of negotiations that we're not necessarily allowed in. There's some uh, negotiations where we're allowed in in certain numbers. So there are restrictions in, in the spaces that we're able to access as well. I think we're not necessarily worried, we're frustrated because I think it is really important that as a climate justice movement we are able to be heard here. A recent research by uh, the Kick Big Polluters Out campaign has shown that there's over 2,400 fossil fuel lobbyists roaming the halls of this conference center and that's been the case for decades. That's more than any other year but that's been the case for decades and we're seeing the impact it's having on the outcomes of the negotiations. We're falling so short of what is necessary for climate justice and by restricted, restricting our voices we're not going to get anywhere nearer. So it's about the balance as well of the spaces we're given and the spaces big polluters are given. So we're seeing the red carpet being unrolled for them and at the same time we're being restricted more and more into a small corner where we're being asked to, be, to not be too loud and to not be too strong and that's, that's just going to have an impact on the outcomes of those, of those negotiations because we're carrying the voices of the movements so it's really important that we're able to hold that space and to be heard. For us, our message is about climate justice and it's about justice. So that's why here we've also decided as a movement, it's been very obvious for us to also stand up in solidarity with Palestine because we're talking about climate justice, we're talking about justice. So it's about, um, it's about really putting the spotlight on whose lives are deemed disposable by those in power from Palestine to the global south and the front lines of climate impacts. And that's why we're pushing and bringing this demand of the end of climate and settler colonialism.